Hello children, it's so exciting seeing all of you today. Oh, look at how lovely you are all looking and I'm blessed to have you on board as we go through the word of God today. Today, we are going to go through the word of God and today's word is taken from Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Can you repeat after me? Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Now, Genesis is the first book in the Bible. So as you look through your Bible, just open the first book in the Bible. I have my Bible here. Do you have yours? Let me see your Bibles. Oh, yes. Silver, green. Oh, you have lovely Bibles. Thank you so much. Now, before we go to the Word, before we go to Genesis 12 verses 1 and 2, have you, do you know about what promise means? Have you ever made a promise to somebody? Or do you remember any time somebody has made a promise to you? Okay, but before we go into the word, I would ask us that if you know the, the meaning of promise, you can tell us. Who knows the meaning of promise? Um, oh, Ikea. Oh, it is an assurance. Thank you, that is smart. Oh, Kweku, it is a declaration. Oh, you kids are awesome. Right. Now, we have the understanding that it is an assurance. It is something. Oh, and Isaac was saying something. He says what? Isaac, tell me. Oh, he said that it's something that somebody wants to do for you. Thank you. That is very simple. And, and I think we all understand that. Great. Let's go to the word. Genesis chapter 12. So let's move up. Let's open our Bibles. Go to chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's read together. One, two, three. Let's all read together. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Can we read it one more time? Let's read over it. It says that the Lord, now the Lord said to Abram, go from, the, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. There's, we're going to do one last activity. And the activity, it has two parts to it. The first one is to now open the right, right, your right palm Put it on your right eye, okay? Put it on your right eye, just that one eye. Shut it. And let's read. We are going to exercise our eyes. Let's see if we will still be able to read the word of God. One, two, three. Let's all go. Now, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. The final activity. Change hands. The left palm, left eye. Let's say it together. One, two, three, go. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Awesome. Can you now see it now? We have done a very good activity with our eyeballs. 
Now we have everything intact. This is one of God's promises that he has established. He established it with Abraham, okay? And in this, we have also learned that whatever God promises us, he will establish and he will fulfill it, children. So believe in the word of God and let it lead you in all things. Have a beautiful time. But before we end to the main lesson, let's say a prayer. Our Lord and our Master Jesus, we thank you for your beautiful word of promise on our lives. We ask that, O oh Lord, you open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our ears to hear, to know your word, your voice, your whispers behind your words. So that, Father Lord, we will act upon it with all agency to bring you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Have a beautiful session. Bye. your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you
Hello, hello, hello. Good to come to your screens once again. I hope your week has been blessed. Mine was blessed. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much that you love us. Thank you for taking care of us. And we thank you for another Bible lesson time. We pray that you teach us your word and help us to keep them in our hearts and obey them in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. Children, I want all of you to sneak to the kitchen. Get a cup of water, like I have a bottle of water here. You get a cup of water and come and put it in front of you. You have one minute. You can let mommy or daddy help you. Get a cup of water and come. Right. So, if you have a cup of water, just keep it in front of you. Don't touch it. Okay? Right. I'll tell you when to drink water. We'll drink it together. So, wait for me. Wait for the instruction. Okay? Very good. Yeah, champions. Yeah. You obey what we say. Yeah. Great. Um, so, let's recap what we've been learning. In our last lesson, we learned that God made a covenant with Abraham. And what do we mean by covenant? A covenant is a serious promise that must be taken seriously. Right? Good. And what was this covenant all about? God told Abraham that he was going to give him a son and make his descendant many like the stars that cannot be counted. Last week, I learned that you were trying to count the stars. Were you able to do that? No. There are so many you cannot count. So that is how God was going to make Abraham's descendant. And that, that was not the only thing. He was also going to give them a beautiful land to stay in. Yeah. Do you know who a descendant is? A descendant is children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. So your, your grandmother had your mommy, and your mommy had you, and you also have children, and your children will have children. That is a descendant. And so God told Abraham he will have many descendants. But children, Abraham had waited and it felt as if the promise kept long in coming. So after some time, Abraham and his wife Sarai tried to help God. Hey, can we help God? No. We cannot help God. But they tried by letting Sarah's servant, Haggai, Hagar, have a child with Abram. And the child was called Ishmael. You know, Ishmael was not the promised child because God told Abram that it was Abram and Sarai who would have the child. And so children, waiting can sometimes make us impatient. I know that your bottle of water is still there, right? Yes. And you wish that you could take it and drink some. Wait a while. When the time comes, we will drink it. Let's take this song and then after that, we'll drink our water and then continue with our Bible story.
welcome back. Now it's time for us to drink our water. You can take your water and then we'll drink it together. That's so refreshing. How did you feel when you were waiting? You were anxious about what we were going to do with the water. And sometimes you felt like touching it. Yes, that is how Abraham and Sarai, they felt when they were waiting for God, God's promise. You know, children, remember that God has a perfect time that his promise comes to pass. God keeps his promise, and the promise comes at a perfect time. So, one day, God visited Abraham again. And this time, he reminded him of the promise that he gave him some time back. Abraham, when he had Ishmael, was 86 years. And the time that God visited him was 13 good years after he had Ishmael. That was a long time of waiting. Can we count 13 on our fingers? Yes, let's start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen good years, Abraham kept waiting. But God keeps his promise at the perfect time he fulfills them. So, when God visited Abram, he reminded him of the promise that he would give him a son. And also that it was Abram and Sarai who were going to have the son. God did something interesting. He changed Abraham's name to Abraham, meaning father of many nations. And then also he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. Children, when we are waiting for God, sometimes it can get so hard because we want the promise that God has given us to come true quickly. You know, sometimes when mommy and daddy promise to take you out to maybe Disneyland or to the mall or to a friend's party or buy you a birthday cake, it, take, it looks as if it's taking too long in coming. But we need to learn to wait. When God promises us, he wants us to wait for the perfect time that this promise will come to pass. Right. So, God's promise was not Ishmael, but God's promise was a baby boy that Abraham and Sarai would have. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. So let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 17. And let's read verse 18 to 19. And remind ourselves of what God told Abram, whether it was Ishmael or it was another baby that will fulfill his promise. And Abram said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, yes, but your wife Sarah will bear a son and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. So was it Ishmael? that God made the promise about? No. It wasn't Ishmael. The promise was that Sarah would have a baby boy. Yes, Sarah will have a baby boy 
and let's find out what the name of this baby boy would be. Isaac, so he wasn't Ishmael. In verse 19, you will call him Isaac. And it was Isaac that God was going to keep his promise to. And the rest of Isaac's generation. So children, God's promise was about Isaac and Abraham and Sarai couldn't wait and they helped God. And because of that, it brought them trouble. In Genesis 17 verse 21 also, God tells them the time that the baby is supposed to come. And let's read it. It says, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. So when was Isaac going to be born? Next year. Yes, yeah, so the following year after God had spoken to Abraham, Isaac was going to be born. So when Abraham was 100 years and Sarah was 90 years, the following year, they gave birth to a baby boy and called him Isaac. Isaac because when God promised them that they were going to have their baby, they laughed about it because they were old. And normally old people don't have children. So they laughed about it. And so Isaac's name was laughter, meaning Abraham and Sarah laughed about the promise. But children, when we wait for God, he keeps his promise and his promise comes to pass at God's perfect time. Then again, Isaac grew and he had children and Isaac's children also had children and the generation continued and 2,000 years after, God's promise came to pass. And this promise was part of the promise that God gave to Abraham, that he will bless the whole world. And how was God going to bless the whole world? He was going to bless the whole world through one special person. Let me give you a clue. This person, we celebrate his birthday at Christmas. Oh, now you know, it's Jesus. Yes, we celebrate Jesus' birthday at Christmas. So Jesus was born 2,000 years after God had made the promise to Abraham. When God promises, it takes long sometimes. But let's remember that at the perfect time, God's promise comes to pass. So, at the right time, Jesus was born. He came to live on this earth, did good things, and he died for you and me, for our sins, so that we can also enjoy the blessings that he promised Abraham. Right, so if you are here, and you are listening to me, and you want to enjoy the blessings that God promised Abraham. I want you to close your eyes and then let's say the sinner's prayer. Ask God to forgive us and make us his friend so that we can also enjoy the blessings that he promised Abraham. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us that your promises they are true, but sometimes they take time before they are fulfilled. And the time that they are fulfilled, they are perfect times for us. Lord, we pray that you help us so that as we want to enjoy your blessings, you help us to live for you. Make us your friend. Forgive us of our sins for the times that we have not waited for you. And Lord, help us to live for you and wait for you 
and trust you and obey you so that we can also enjoy the blessings that you promised the descendants of Abraham. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Right, so children, we've learned that God keeps his promise, but these promises come to pass at God's perfect time. These promises come to pass at God's perfect time. Abraham and Sarah had to wait for a long time before Isaac came. We don't try to help God in his own time. Whatever he has promised, he would do it. So God bless you for listen, listening. I wish you a blessed week and see you another time. Bye. Your promises I know I can trust in you When you speak it God you do it Your words are always true God makes a promise And then he keeps it Numbers 23, 19 God makes a promise And then he keeps it Numbers 23, 19 2319 You keep your promises I know I can trust in you When you speak it God you do it Your words are always true God makes a promise and then he keeps it Numbers 2319 promise and then he keeps it number 2319 you promise to make me strong you're with me all day long you have good plans for me so I will say God makes a promise and then he Welcome back, children. What a wonderful story. The lesson that we have learned today is an important lesson. God is faithful to all his promises. And in his perfect time, his promises come to pass. So Ishmael was not the promised child. Isaac was the promised child. Today we are going to make a craft that will remind us that in God's perfect time, he fulfills all his promises. Okay, I have my craft bag ready. I hope you have yours too. So we are going to need a number of things. We are going to need glue. We are going to need our A4 hard cuts. Any color will do. And then um, a pair of scissors. We need some strings. We will need our permanent markers, or you can use a felt pen or a pen. And then our stars. But you know, you can have a template and cut out a number of stars. But our most important thing will be our craft sticks because that is what we will be using for our picture frame. At the end of it, this is how our craft will look like. This will be our craft. God's perfect time. Okay, let's get started. You can print out some stars on an A4 sheet and cut them out. Or you can have your stars on a card like that. 
I've been getting ready for this. So I started with my printed sheet of stars and I've been cutting them out. So as you can see, I have my little stars here. But I also have some sticky stars, you know, so if you can find that, why not? We're going to use this to decorate. Remember that God promised Abraham that his, des his descendants will be as many as the stars in the sky. We have our craft sticks. So that's what we're going to be using on the borders of our frame. We have our craft sticks on the borders of the frame. So what you will do, you start with your, any color will do, I choose to use blue today. So you can either use the big craft stick or you can use the small ones, like I did on our sample craft. So we'll put, I'll use the big one for this craft. Since I have a small one, a small craft stick frame already. So you put your craft sticks on the paper and you draw the outline to get your frame, okay? So as you can see me doing your craft sticks will go on the paper. You put it down like a frame. And then you just trace the outlines of it. Trace the outlines. And so you do it for all four of them. I did the first two earlier on. And when you're done, this is how it will be like. And so you cut that out. You take your pair of scissors. And you remember, if you're too young to use the scissors, you have your parent help you, or your older brother or sister, if you have one. And so you cut it out. we are going to learn a response for our craft. So when I say, in God's perfect time, you will say at home, he fulfills all his promises. So when I say, in God's perfect time, you say, he fulfills all his promises. Can I hear you? In God's perfect time, uh-huh. Can you say it louder? In God's perfect time. Yes, he fulfills all his promises. Okay, great. Now I have my cutout, so I'm going to glue my craft sticks on it now. So it's better to use the white the, this white glue. So we will glue, put some glue on our craft sticks and start gluing it on our cutout card. Okay, are you following? Let's glue our cutout. We are making our frame, our picture frame now. Oh, this is looking good. I hope you have yours going too. So you will have something like this. We are getting there, right? 
in God's perfect time, yes, he fulfills all his promises. Okay, so let's continue. So now you can decorate your picture frame. I am going to decorate mine with some stars as I have already cut them out. And then I have some sticky stars as well. But you can use whatever you want. You can use glitter. You can draw on anything that will make your picture frame beautiful. So I'm going to put the stars at the edges of my frame. Isaac, the child of promise. In God's perfect time, he fulfills all his promises. Great. Now, I am going to write in just as we did for this. So what do I have in there? In God's perfect time, he fulfills all his promises, remember? So our picture frame, we are going to write on there, God's perfect time. And when you hang it up in your room, or you can just put it on your fridge, or wherever you want to keep it, you always remember that God's perfect time, he fulfills all his promises. So we will write on here, God's perfect time. So for those of us who can't write, maybe a sibling can help you, or mommy, or daddy, or an adult. So God's perfect, P, E, R, F, E, C, T. Perfect. God's perfect time. Great. So if you have um, perhaps glitter or anything you want, a felt pen, you can just do some zigzags on your frame. Or you can draw some love. You can just decorate it however you want it to make it look really beautiful. I'll put a few of my sticky stars on here. God promised Abraham that he will have a son and through his son he would have many descendants. Though Abraham did not wait patiently God's promise came through. He gave Isaac. And guess what? He did promise a Messiah. And that did also come through. God gave us Jesus, the promised Messiah, from the descendants of Abraham. This is our frame. God's perfect time. God always fulfills his promises. And his promise was from Isaac. Okay, this looks great, doesn't it? I'm sure you had a wonderful time just as I did. 
Oh, you could also put a string through the frame. Or you can just leave it as it is. So whichever one you would love, it's all good. God's perfect time. Great, children. It's been an amazing craft time. Do you agree with me? Good. So we can put this in our room and always remember God's perfect time. Okay, shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus to save us. You kept your promise. You gave Abraham the child of promise, Isaac. And through the descendants of Abraham and Isaac, you sent your son Jesus to save us all. We thank you, Lord, that you are ever faithful. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So see you next week. Bye.